Welcome to this tutorial request. In this tutorial request, we will be uh, talking about AI again. Uh, this time the topic will be about smart decision making for AI. This episode will be more about the concept of it rather than a focus on the actual code because the code will vary a lot depending on uh, situation to situation. Uh, but anyway, that's what we will be talking about today. If you would like to request a future tutorial on a subject, please leave a comment down below with the request. Let's just jump in to see what we're going to be creating today. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is essentially what we will be creating today, or at least talking about today. So here we have this character, it is an AI that is doing different attacks and all of these different attacks have been granted different values in a determination of which are better or worse and then it is executing those based on its intelligence level available to it. So a smarter character would always do the optimal attack in a given circumstance and the dumber you make it the more of the options that it has available to it it will allow to choose from so sometimes it chooses a great option sometimes it chooses a bad option it's all dependent on a intelligence level available to it which in this instance we are controlling with an enumerator so here we are inside of unreal engine 4.26 now you can see that I have this AI character doing animations over here and this is determined based on the intelligence level that he has over here which is a drop down we can change around and he will do animation based on this essentially so now that he is cheating he will always do the index 0 attack which is the optimal attack and if we lower his intelligence to something else like dumb he will have more options available to him because they are worse options essentially. So taking a look at what we're doing, let's start with our behavior tree. It's a very simple tree. It has one task that says evaluate actions, one that says perform action, and one that says wait, and then it repeats this over and over. The evaluate action just calls on a blueprint interface on the controlled pawn, and the perform action just calls a perform action on the blueprint. So all the logic is kept inside of the character for this example. So starting off with our evaluate action, what happens? Well, when evaluate, ap evaluate actions happen, we're actually calling on uh, determine action is the, the name of the function here. So determine action consists of a few steps. The first step is to establish which actions are available. Now this depends on the game that you're making and what decisions they're making. It could be something like a positional action, like determining between three different positions where to go. It could be determining among X amount of enemy targets to attack, which one it should be attacking. So if you have four different uh, targets to attack, then that would be four different options. It could be, like in this case, what kind of an attack to do. So uh, a different amount of uh, attack actions is available. So whatever that type of action you have, the first step in this specific scenario of solving this is to establish which are these actions. Then after that, you have to determine the action efficiency. So to take a example of the location situation, if you have a character that wants to get somewhere where it's safe, it might want to uh, get to a place where it has least line of sight from whoever is shooting it, for example. And the point here is that you want to assign a value to the action to see, you need to quantify how good or bad the action is. In this case, I'm building up a, an array of available actions. And the array consists of this structure, which is an efficiency value, which is a float, and an action in this case, which is just an anime montage for simplicity of this. So the efficiency value is something that you determine. So something that has no line of sight to the hostile character might have a value of 1. So 1 being the highest, 0 being the lowest. And then uh, a place that has maybe one line of sight angle uh, maybe has a value of half. And then another one that has like multiple hostiles that can see you, then that would have a value of, of zero, for example. Uh, in the case when it comes to targets, 
uh, if you have uh, an AI that needs to determine which uh, target to attack, and it maybe has four different targets, you might want to make sure that the one that has the lowest hit points has gets the highest value here. So that one gets a one, uh, or maybe a, if it has 20% life, you maybe want to give it a 0.8 in value or something like that. How you want to algorithmize this is up to you. But make sure that you, you quantify all the different values. And in this case, we're doing attack actions. So if you would have ranged attacks and melee attacks and the opponent is far away, then you would give a high value to the ranged attacks and a low value to the melee attacks because the melee attacks would likely do no damage, but the ranged attacks would. In addition to that, you can also have things like how much does uh, a specific action do in damage. Make sure that the higher uh, damage abilities have a higher value for this. So if you have a ranged attack that does a lot of damage, maybe you get it a value of one because it's a ranged attack and the opponent is ranged, so uh, you're going to hit it. And then it has a damage of 10, which you equate to is, it is the strongest attack you have, so you give a value of one. You multiply the value of range with the value of the damage, so one times one, and you have a final value of one. But instead, you have a melee attack that does maybe 10 damage as well, so it would have a value of one from the attack, but it would have zero because it can't actually reach the character that it's fighting because it's a melee attack. You could multiply the zero with the one and end up with a final quantified value of zero, and then you just do calculations like that, essentially. So in the end, you have calculated a value of actions that all have an efficiency value connected to it, and then you proceed with sorting it, making sure that the highest value action is on the top, the lowest value action is in the bottom, and then falling in that scale in, in the array. So that you can, in the end, then use a very simple uh, measure of determining which actions to do. So a super smart character, an AI, would choose only the best action. So it always would pick C, the index zero of this array because that's the best uh, available action to take at a given point in time. But a less smart character, uh, but still smart character would maybe have the range of zero index and one index. So it sometimes would do the optimal thing and sometimes a slightly less optimal thing. And that's essentially what we're doing here. I'm just taking the array index of the intelligence level, which is this enumerator that I've created that is cheating, that always does the smartest thing. Smart, that does the, the two smart smartest actions, or randomize between them. Average, which will randomize about the three top actions, and dumb, which will randomize about around the top four actions that are available. So I'm just using that index here, sending it into a random integer, getting that from my available actions index, and then I'm taking out that specific action and sending it out to perform. In this case, it is a montage, so I'm playing that specific montage. So that's essentially how you can approach making a smart AI. You make the different actions available, you quantify how good they are, you sort them, and then you pick among them based on an intelligence index. If you want to make this even more elaborate, you can also weigh the different indexes, so making a dumb character less likely to make the optimal play and more likely to make a dumb play, for example, and things like that. So that's essentially how you could approach this in one way to make AI smart decision making. I hope all of that made sense. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.